That was the muse with Starlight. Hi, this is Adam Buxton. Hey, this is Joe Cornish. And you're listening to the Adam and Joe radio program here on XFM. The muse is very depressing these days, isn't it? I know, it's all it's always bad muse. Nothing but days. upsetting stories on the muse. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Why can't the muse just, you know, have some hopeful stuff? Some leave them laughing stories. You know, just do a song about a cat being rescued from a tree or something. Yeah, or an old lady that started a campaign to get yobbos off the streets and succeeded. <laughs> That's right. Come on, the muse. Does Alice, is Alice, just, Alice, just, 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 hello? Yes, he's still in Muse. Is Alistair Stewart still in Muse? Yeah, he's still in Muse. He yeah. reads the Muse. He How reads long the can Muse. we keep this patch of going for? I, on I for? estimate uh, one hour. One hour, yeah. really? Mm. Wow. Well, let's not try that now. Okay, then. We need a Guinness Book of Records representative to do it properly. Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday morning. I hope you're all still in bed, but, you know, mentally awake, but physically still asleep. That's the perfect state to listen to this show in. Actually, maybe mentally asleep as well would be a good idea. Mm. Let the excitement of the new music wash over you. That's right. We've got music coming up from the Foo Fighters, the Rapture Bjork, the Fratellis, the Editors, and also some some free plays and Snow Patrol. That's just the first hour. Plus, we've got some fantastic prizes, a pair of tickets to see Primal Scream at the Brixton Academy on Saturday, the 2nd of December. That's, of course, my brother's birthday. Is uh, it? So that's a chance for you to celebrate that as well. My brother's birthday. Everyone likes to celebrate that. And there's a pair of tickets to see Kasabian at Earl's Court on Tuesday, the 19th of December, which is, of course, the day before my birthday, which is, of course, very exciting for everybody as well. Wow, so it's a big Cornish birthday bonanza. Yeah. December. Also, three copies of the Complete Black Books box set, series one, two, and three. That's amazing. All That's three series of black books. Good prize. That what? is a great prize. That was pretty much Channel 4's last great sitcom, wasn't yep. it? Yep. Before they stopped making funny programmes. <laughs> Apart from the IT crowd. And uh, Modern Toss, obviously. Uh, obviously. Uh, okay. That's enough. A self-interested hoobar. Let's play some more music. Here's the Foo Fighters. I've got another... There you go. That's the Foo Fighters. I I just adore the Foo Fighters in a in a ludicrous way. Like a man my age shouldn't. I mean, you know, I'm not that old, but I'm a mature man, and yet I I just sort of love Dave Grohl. Like a, you're younger than Dave Grohl, though, like aren't a you? Fourteen year old girl. Isn't everybody younger than Dave Grohl? No, I believe I'm almost exactly the same age as Dave He's Grohl. He's the coolest old man in pop. You reckon? Yeah, I think if you're sort of over the hill and want to look cool then that kind of hair is what to go for. He's brilliant, though, because he's always going to have that groovy, slightly skeletal physique as well. Yeah. Know, look a bit sunken and yeah. sullen. Yeah. But yet be a smiley man with a big tash. Yeah, that's the first single, of course, to be taken from the group's fifth album, In Your Honour, which was out on June the 13th, Adam. Yeah, a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's exciting stuff. So, listen, the telephone number is 0871 222 1049. That's 0871 222 1049. Or as my dad would say it, O eight seven one two 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 one oh four nine. <laughs> Does it really take him that long to say a number? Yeah, and he breaks them up in an insane, illogical way that He's you could crazy. never remember. Or you can text us on eight three nine three six. That's eight three XFM. Uh, you can of course email us at Adam and Joe at xfm.co.uk, even though the emails have actually been broken for the last month and a half. They're you, fixed now. Are they? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Now she tells us. So there's going to be a massive backlosh. <laughs> a backlosh. Yeah, what is a backlosh? <laughs> it's it's when you uh, use Listerine. Is it? And it comes out of your nose. A, ba a black splosh. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be a massive black splosh of emails building up in the back of the computer. <laughs> All banging up the works. <laughs> but they're going to be released... And uh, we've got some competitions coming up, right, Adam? For competition fans, you're in the right place because we've got not one but two different kinds of competition this wow. week. Joe Cornish, what's your competition? My competition is Movie Lingo Bingo, mm. uh, where we play you a very, very famous line from a very, very famous movie in a foreign language. <laughs> Imagine that. So it's a chance for people with a grasp of a second language to get ahead of less educated people. That's right. If you have a grasp of German... If you speak good German, you could be in with a head start on this competition. We like to reward people with above average intelligence and with bilingual capabilities. What with Britain just joining the European common market? Yeah. It's time to embrace our foreign friends. We're not down with the dummy. No, we ain't down with the dumbing. No. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> We're certainly not. <laughs> also, we have uh, the return in the final hour 
of I've even forgotten what it's called. It's such a bad title. Rock and Reel, Rock and Rubs. Yeah, Rock and Reel or Rock and oh, Rubs. That's a great competition. <laughs> yeah, that's coming up as well. So stay tuned, competition fans and fans of great music, more of which we have right now. This is a song that's really growing on me, and I thought initially when I heard you it... You don't even know what it is. I do, I You just you. said that and then lifted the piece of paper to your eyes to see what song would be growing on you. No, because if it was... You're full of bushy. Am I? I'm not, I promise you, because I knew it was the rapture with Get Myself Into It. Sunny day, keeping the clouds away on my way. Bye. What are you doing? That's the rapture. Is it? Yeah. Are you suggesting they've ripped off the Sesame Street they song? They've partly ripped off the Sesame Street song, yeah. Well, that's a good ploy, isn't it? Because everybody loves the Sesame Street song. Can you tell me how to get... Get you know what? Sesame Talking of Sesame Street, Street yeah. shut up. Sorry. I read somewhere <laughs> that they're introducing the first female, new female Sesame Street character in something like 10 or 20 years. I didn't even know Sesame Street was still going on. Of course it's still going on. Jamie Foxx has just appeared on it. And they're introducing the first new female character for years. I didn't know that Sesame Street was exclusively male. Neither did I. Is it some sort no, of... No, it's not exclusively what male. Are the, who are the female Sesame Street inhabitants, then? Cookie Monster, male. Oh, you mean puppet-wise? Yeah, puppet-wise. I know there's the, an occasional lady that, that bounces in, but name me some female Sesame Street residents. There's some of indeterminate ginger, ginger. Ginger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Which well, ones have got indeterminate ginger? I always thought of Big Bird as a big lady. No, Big Bird's a boy. Big Bird's a big bird. Big Bird is a bo <laughs> Big Bird is definitely a man. It's a big leggy bird. There, there are listeners out there. You know what gender Big Bird is. I always thought of Big Bird as being like a big backpacker. He's from just a child. Ca Canada or something. You a know, backpacker. There was a girl I used to work with who was very much like who Big Bird. Who looked a bit like Big Bird. Yeah, yeah. Really tall and long legs and with, a sort of, with yellow feathers. She had big, uh, a huge big yellow beak. beak. Yeah. You kind of talk like that. You know what? To this day, I still can't work out how they do blooming Big Bird. What sort of a person is in there? You know what confuses me when the head moves and both arms move? Wait, you're right. I, I still can't figure out how they do it. How no. do they do it? Is it... It's big chunky... It's just big chunky legs. What What do you mean? It's... Uh, what do you... What you how do they... How does a person fit inside the suit of Big Bird, right? Because it's got two arms... Yeah. ...thereby occupying the job of the two human arms. It's got two legs, which thereby take the role of the two human legs. But yet, all four limbs are now in business, okay? Mm. They're all taken... All that's left to operate any kind of puppetry is a mouth and a head and a neck, right? Yeah. And its eyes move, its beak opens and closes, and its neck moves. How can it do all those things with just, just that person's head? Well, yeah, they're puppeteering the head separately, aren't Remote they? control. Uh, I would say it's a mixture of cables and... You check out that Big Bird Man, it doesn't make sense. Can you call it up on the in interweb? Yeah, yeah, probably, but we don't stoop to that kind of cheating. No, I want to have a look at Big Bird and then maybe I can all explain... All right, during the next song we'll check out how Big Bird operates, but I think it's some kind of a freak. Right. I think Sesame Street's been going long enough. They've got some kind of a genetic engineering lab somewhere in Brooklyn. Yeah. And they're stretching necks. Big freak. Big freaks. Big bird freaks. They've got a collection of freaks, mutants, <laughs> who are specially bred to fit inside those puppet costumes. Yeah. <laughs> you can see them. They frequent a calf in That's Lower Brooklyn. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's a good idea. Cup of coffee, please, Charlie. <laughs> it's a bit like the island of Dr. Moreau. The except I, the to basement of Sesame Dr. Street. Dr. Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> with yeah. freaks and mutants. I think that's true. Jim Henson's behind it. He's an evil man. <laughs> the late, great Jim Henson. Can't say that about one of the most well-loved men. Well, obviously, I'm joking. In all of puppetry. It's true. And entertainment. Anyway, enough of this waffling garbage. <laughs> <laughs> enough? <laughs> we've still got two We're and a half hours We've got a lot left. more of it. Here's Bjork. This is one of our choices, human behaviour. That was uh, Bjork, Bjork, B Bjork with yeah. human behaviour. This is Adam and Joe, XFM London's 104.9. Big Bird update. His birthday's March the 20th. His favourite song is the alphabet song. His best friend is the Snuffleupagus. His favourite quote is G, Mr Looper. I mean Mr Cooper, I mean Hooper. Uh, he likes to figure things out, being part of everything, roller skating, bird seed, milkshakes from Mr. Hooper's store. <laughs> he dislikes when he can't get help and when nobody believes that his best friend exists. And the way he's puppeteered is completely obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Arm in each arm, leg in each leg, then some kind of tall mechanical hat on the head, which operates the neck, and then people behind the camera work the head and beak. It's perfectly f straightforward, and I'm a blooming idiot. It's very much like the Teletubbies, the way they do them, too. That's our uh, Adam and Joe Big Bird Info Burst. <laughs> for this week back with a competition very short oh they're so hot right now ouch you're burning me that's too hot step away you're so hot it's hurting my face 
the fratellis. What is a fratelli? I know, and I'm not going to tell you because you deserve to suffer in your uncoolness. I know what a fratelli is. Oh, no. It's a fried telly. <laughs> it's a delicious, crispy, battered, baked television. They eat them in Scotland. I have a fratelli, please. Mmm, <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Tasty, wasty. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's a little scene from America. <laughs> Live from America, where they're all eating fratellis. Right, it's... That was a Chelsea dagger. What's a Chelsea dagger? <sighs> a Chelsea dagger is a type of shoe. <laughs> I'm putting on my Chelsea daggers. They wear them down the King's Road at the moment. We're just talking complete rubbish. Nobody yeah. knows what either of those things are, but it's the follow-up to Henrietta, yeah? From yeah. their debut album, Costello Music, which is coming out on September the 11th. So what kind of a date is that for an album to come out? Is Elvis Costello's next album called Fratelli Music? Very possibly. It's competition time. Competition time. You could win a DVD or tickets to a show. You just never know. So sharpen up your brain and get... Ready to play! It's time to play Movie Lingo Bingo. We usually play a crap commentary corner uh, this uh, this week, but you know what? I just couldn't find a crap commentary. Well, you know, you've done amazingly well. How long have I been doing that for? Two years? Maybe longer. Maybe longer. I think I've exhausted every single commentary. I was reduced to Vince Vaughn and Ben Stiller on Dodgeball the other day. There's nothing worse than li listening to a whole commentary and realising it's useless yeah. an hour and a half later. <laughs> I felt so depressed. But you must have found out some funny stuff about Dodgeball. No, because they, they do it humorously. Oh, it's a funny right. one and it's not funny. No. It's tedious. Yeah, there's some good ones in the comedy world. Well, you dig some out and, uh, and pass them on to me because this week I've had to f uh, resort to Movie Lingo Bingo. This is the competition where we play you an incredibly famous line from an incredibly famous film. Don't distrust me, listeners. I promise you that this is a, a line you will know. It's very, very famous indeed. But the catch is it's being spoken in Charman. Charman? Charman, yeah. Oh. The language of Charman. The Germans, they, they watch films? <laughs> yeah, they watch the, die, die films. <laughs> die Filme? Der Films. As you can tell, we're not very good at German, and we'd like to caricature the entire nation and race in a grotesque manner. <laughs> <laughs> das Film? <laughs> so if you are German, please don't be insulted. We're just idiots. Uh, but but uh, as recompense, you get a head start in this competition. So listen carefully. This is a line of dialogue from a very famous film, but in German. And all you have to do is call 0871 222 1049. Tell me what film this is from and what, I I what is being said in German. Hit it. Ich für die Gier. Die Gier. Nach Tempo in mir. Got any, got any clues there, Adam? It's sounding pretty effeminate. Do you think? Yeah. Do you know what it is? Well, is it? It's not a filthy film, right? It's not a filthy film. It's a family fave. Yeah. Ich für die Gier, die Gier nach Tempo in mir. <laughs> oh, big noises, bangs. I don't think you should give too many clues, because that is... It's, it's pretty easy, and you can almost get it just from the, uh, what's the word? You know, the rhythm of the speech. Mm. Only it goes a bit wrong at the, the end, because their words are longer than yeah. the real ones. <laughs> Die Spiegelspongel. If beer the gear, the gear for temple mir. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So call 0871 if you can tell what movie that's from and what line of dialogue they're saying. It's very famous, and you could get a chance to win tickets to see Primal Scream or Kasabian or a complete Black Books DVD set. For God's sake, call now! Here's the editors. Oops, I mean editors with blood. <laughs> Editors there with blood. That's a serious song about a serious substance. A substance that none of us would be alive without. Wow, that's deep, man. <laughs> that is deep, isn't it? This is Adam and Joe on XFM London's, London's 104.9. It's competition time. We've been playing movie lingo. Bingo, we played you this clip in German from a very famous film. Ich für die Gier. Die Gier. Nach Tempo in mir. I gear that temple in there. Ich or something like that. We've got Orlando on the line. Hello, Orlando. Hello, boys. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. We're men, Orlando. Oh, oh excuse me. Yeah, we're big and powerful, muscles, head, all over. Oh, Joe okay. hates being called a boy. Yeah, I've, I'm just very old now, <laughs> and it's just wrong. Um, but thanks for calling. Pleasure. And uh, are you a German speaker, Orlando? Do you speak fluent German? Uh, yes, I, I do, actually. Well, I, well, Tell I the truth, Orlando. I'm, ha I'm actually half German, so... Uh, 
So, uh, is that really true? It is true, really. Which of your parents is German? My dad. Your dad. And what's German for your dad? Uh, mein Vater or dein Vater. Wow, you really are German. Seriously. You just wanted him to say mein Vater. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And now I'm happy. So do you understand what that what was said in the clip we just played you, Orlando? Yes, yes I do, yeah. Tell us which movie it was and tell us what they were saying, if it's, you can. It's I Feel the Need, the Need for Speed, and it's Top Gun. Definitely. Of course Yes, yeah, so is. say it again. Say that in German. Uh, ich, ich fühle... You know, I, I, said I, I said I wasn't that good in German. Excuses, excuses, <laughs> Orlando. <laughs> Not sounding quite so German anymore. Your mouth has written a cheque that your ass cannot <laughs> cash. <laughs> No one's ass could possibly cash that particular. No, way. no one's asses can cash checks anyway. I don't think they let you hand them over between your bum cheeks. Unless you you'd have can you imagine the kind of incredible control, bum control you'd have to have to cash a check. To cash a check. Yeah, to write your account number First on the to, back. You know to, oh yeah. Hello Orlando, are you still with us? I was just imagining slightly uh, shocked by uh, this kind of talk. But, this bum talk on a Saturday morning. It's all right, everyone has bums, and everyone's got to come to terms with its uh, <laughs> skills. But well done, Orlando. That's very good. But won anything? Yeah, you have won something. Would you like a pair of tickets to see Primal Scream at the Brixton Academy on my brother's birthday? Or would you like to see Kasabian at Earl's Court on the day before my birthday? And I won't bother telling you those dates, because they're obviously very famous. <laughs> Um, I'll go for Primal Scream, definitely. Primal Scream on the 2nd of December. Yeah. Well done. Orlando, you're very clever. You're half <laughs> German. You're going to go and see Primal Scream, and we love you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Orlando. Thanks. Bye. Cheers, bye. Take care. Bye-bye. That was Snow Patrol with Chasing Cars. That's not a, a thing that we recommend anyone should ever do. No, do not chase cars. Don't it's chase very, cars. very dangerous. And it's rude to the people in the cars. Yeah, well, it's just a bit pointless because they're a lot faster they're much than anybody faster. on There's foot. Well, there's almost no way that you could catch up with one unless you were chasing cars in, tr in a traffic jam. Yeah. And that's dangerous and it's not good for you because of all the fumes. Yeah, Snow Patrol, you know, they're disgraceful. They're a total disgrace. And they're encouraging stupid, stupid behaviour. You know what their next uh, uh, single is called? What? Eating Bricks. Is it really? Yeah. Well, that's very stupid. And Do you know what the single after that's called? What? Retrieving Frisbees from Electrical Power Stations. That is so dangerous. Do you know what the next one's called? No. Drying damp socks on a one of them fires what have glowy sticks. I done that. <laughs> CD Baron. Do you know what the next one's called? No. Putting an angle poise lamp next to the bath for reading. Do you know what the next one's called? What? Um, having a smoke. Having a smoke is stupid. Because it gives you canker. Yeah. That's Snow Patrol, then, with Chasing Cars, a stupid band, stupid <laughs> idea. <laughs> this is Adam and Joe, XFM, London's is 104.9. Speaking of stupid ideas, here is my review for something I haven't seen yet. This is something I started to read last week on the show. Yeah, but you forgot half of your notes and you had to stop halfway. Yeah. But this is good, so you're going to review something you, you actually haven't experienced, just like everybody does. A while ago, uh, I saw a very brief mention of the film A Scanner Darkly in the paper, but since then the only research I've done about the film is uh, looking at the poster. Uh, and so based on that, I'm going to review it. Right Brilliant. <clears throat> A Scanner Darkly is a sci-fi fantasy set in a dystopian future where the boundaries between fantasy and reality have become blurred by weird drugs given to people by the government, or something like that. Although that may sound exciting, like, say, The Matrix or Total Recall, director Richard Linklater has probably decided to make what little story there is as confusing and elliptical as possible, with very long sections of the film being taken up with incredibly dull, druggy conversations. But I could well be wrong, as I haven't seen it. Like Waking Life, Linklater's previous stream of unconsciousness cartoon, A Scanner Darkly has been entirely animated using a technique known as rotoscoping to bring the characters to life. Although, in the case of Keanu Reeves, the process has probably only been partially successful and he remains, as ever, barely animated. But not having seen it, I couldn't say for certain. All in all, I imagine I'd find the film quite intriguing and often quite beautiful, but ultimately rather frustrating and a little pretentious. A worthwhile experiment that didn't quite happen. Of course, it might be the best film I've ever seen in my life, but without actually watching it, it's almost impossible to say. But for its ambition alone, I'm giving it a fence-sitting 5 out of 10. 
See you at the movies. Wow, that was very in-depth, considering you haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, you know, rotoscoping, they actually film it live action and then cartoon over the top. You know that. I do now. You do now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that was brilliant. I'm certainly going to um, be undecided about seeing that based on your review. Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'll do <laughs> anymore. <laughs> it's confusing, ever. isn't it? Yeah, this is Adam and Joe, XFM, London's 104.9999. XFM. The Killers, with When You Were Young. This is Adam and Joe on XFM, London's 104.9. Welcome to the second hour of our show. We're here with you until 1pm when Mick Rock uh, comes at you, so to speak, live from New York. Um, hello, Adam. Hi. Mick Rock here, live from New York. Mm -hmm. What a band, The Clash. Were. Right. Thanks, Mick. Uh, see you at one. That's an exciting glimpse of things to come. But now, Adam, let's talk about young people. Yeah, go on then. Youth, right? Youths. What, what, are, they th what are they thinking? You, you know, know, I wonder that the whole time. What are they doing? Uh -huh. What are their opinions? Right. They bring terror to the streets. That's right. A chaos to the multiplex. They've got and no, the shopping mall. They've got no discernible morals or principles. No, no, they're feral. They're wild. They are wild. Right, young people. It's about time some kind of uh, TV station did come some kind of survey to figure out what young people are thinking, right? I agree. Well, luckily, MTV's come along, the voice of youth, right? And last Sunday, uh, I don't know if anyone out there saw this, MTV uh, broadcast a programme called um, The MTV Generation. And they did a massive survey of young people to find out what really makes young people tick. Uh-huh. Uh, and so uh, I recorded this documentary, and it was very odd, and rubs. And I've got some clips to illustrate it. Okay, first of all, this is the music they used for it, and this is young people music, okay? Yeah. If you're making a documentary about young people, you've got to have music that uh, is to the taste of young people, okay? Uh -huh. So you've got to kind of, imagine you're an old man who works at MTV, you're trying to find a piece of music that sums up the absolute here and now. For a long time, it was jungle music that did that job. Yeah, but jungle music is now too slow and boring. So let's hear the title music to the MTV documentary, uh, The MTV Generation. <laughs> that's the title music. So that's what young people are listening to, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they dance to in the club. <laughs> <laughs> What's that sort of music called? Uh, well, so it's almost drill and bass, isn't drill it? Drill and bass. Yeah. Does that exist? Yeah, that's like square pusher and so. Really? Yeah, it's a bit Apex like Aphex Twin. Twin but yeah. even Aphex Twin, that's kind of old now, isn't it? It is. So they've had to speed it up and put sort of drain noises in, because <laughs> that's what the young pe young people like. So already the the documentary is doing very well. And here's uh, a little glimpse at the first link. Okay, so what sort of a voiceover do you think they've got for this documentary, Adam? I would say it's sort of more laid back, June Sarpong, maybe regional. Mm. Mm. You know, so, so if it's from Lane, it's someone who can barely speak. Yeah, you're, you're close. Right. Uh, but it's probably from Manchester or something like that. Yeah, no, that's Tom. not so close. Right. Have a listen to what it is. This is this is the first chunk of voiceover from the MTV uh, MTV Generation doc, uh, documentary. Okay. So, what is it like to be part of the so-called MTV generation? What do you think? What do you do? And what influences you? Well, there are 7 million 16 to 24-year-olds living in the UK, and this summer we spoke to a diverse mix and carried out a national survey. This is MTV's snapshot of Britain's youth. Yeah? That's very perky, though. Very it's nicely spoken young lady. It is. But she's saying there that there are 7 million 16 to 24-year-olds. So what gets me about these documentaries about teens, and they often appear in article form in Sunday magazines and newspapers, it's a cheap way for editors to fill some paper, mm -hmm. you know, fill some pages, by saying, let's do a survey of teens. But it's very spurious because, first of all, when you're between 16 and 24 years old, your tastes are changing massively day upon day, right? Mm. Like, you might wake up in the morning and be a completely different person from the one you were the day before. Yeah. So it's a very difficult group of people to pin down. Plus, there are seven million of them. Uh -huh. So basically, do you not think it's true to say that amongst those seven million people, you would find a representative of pretty much every single viewpoint and attitude there is? 
Yeah, you would, you're you going to find so. people who have extreme opinions in one direction, people who have extreme opinions in the other direction. And any kind of attempt to draw some kind of uh, average uh, state of play amongst those people is, is pretty spurious, wouldn't you say? Especially in the context of a 20-minute MTV program. Yeah, I guess the most accurate thing you could say, point to is, like, fashion tastes and trends and things like Even that. Even that. I think you'd just find such a diverse range that it would be impossible to pull out any meaningful trends. Yeah, but you can say, like, just from looking at people hanging around uh, Oxford Street or whatever, most youths are gravitating towards the kind of gothic look if they are, um... I don't know, man. My, my, anyway. my, th my, um kind of theory here is that even that is rubbish. I think this is a lazy way for journalists to make an article. You just pick five random teenagers, yeah. usually related to people who work at the magazine or, or TV station. You just write their opinions, and then you've got an article about what teens think. <laughs> but yeah. you could just pick any old teen. My theory is illustrated with this next clip, which is a quick montage of exactly what young people are thinking and what they are doing. Pete Docket is a drugged up waste of space. 24 hour drinking is so sick. David Cameron is trying to be Tony Blair. <laughs> First come in, ban on smoking is rubbish. Jordan is plastic. That's, there you go. I didn't Opinions. realize they thought that. Opinions mm. from teens. Pete Doherty is a drugged up waste of space. Jordan is plastic. 24 hour drinking is sick. <laughs> They're just random opinions, aren't they? Yeah, no, that is, that's pretty weird. So there you go, a series of uh, random opinions from teens that uh, are unified only by the fact that they all happen to be between 16 and 24 years old. That can't be right, though, because who loves Pete Doherty? Lots of people love Doherty, even though he is uh, a drugged-up nutbag. And who, who is out there loving him if it's not for the teens? Yeah, and who's the MTV generation anyway? I thought we were the MTV generation. Like, we were teenagers when it started. Yeah, that is true. They can't just have all the generations. No, 16 to 24 year olds, it's mad, it was a mad documentary and just an entirely random selection of opinions telling us nothing. And it's rubs. But here's a record every single 16 to 24 year old is bound to love, every single one of the 7 million of them. It's Justice versus Simeon with We Are Your Friends. That was the Kooks with She Moves In Her Own Way. This is Adam and Joe on XFM, London's 104.9. Don't forget the X list is coming up. Uh, at the top of the hour, you, you can request... Uh, any sort of XFM classic record and we'll play it for you here on the Adam and Joe radio show. Everything all right there, Adam? Yes, fine. Just looking at the playlist. Right. And uh, excited to see that someone's popped the song Brilliant Mind by Furniture down here. Do you know that song? Yes, you must be out of your brilliant mind. <laughs> Isn't that quite old? <laughs> it's old and bad. Why is it in there? I don't know. We're going to have to pop it out. Wow. And replace it with something Man, else. Man, people <laughs> might be excited about it now that I sung it so well. No, there's no way that the actual song could ever do justice to your rendition. That's true. Mine was much better. Yeah. And, yeah, of course, the kooks there. The kooks are, are, are extremely hot right now. The kooks are everywhere. Uh, everywhere I go, I see the kooks anyway. Men with big, big floppy hair. Yeah, the, the big hair is in, isn't it? I'm not, yeah. I'm not having... When that. will big hair ever go out? Big hair's been in since we were teenagers. No. Yeah, it has. The Jesus and Mary chain, everyone had giant sort of goth hair. They looked in, in absolutely nuts, though. Yeah, it's all got a bit more sort of Mark Boland now, hasn't it? A bit more attractive looking with the big hair. Big rock hair. I've got big hair. Have you? Yeah. Just say yes. Yes. Because, <laughs> you know, the listeners can't see, so they can imagine me with big <laughs> hair. And I'm really handsome. I've got a big beard. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. I look like, you know, they're releasing Angel Heart on DVD. Yes. Um, special edition. And I look exactly like Robert De Niro on the cover of Angel Heart. They're remaking it as well. Did you know that? No. Yeah, they're remaking Angel Heart. They'll what? stop at nothing. What's the point of remaking Angel Heart? Well, because Mickey Rourke's in it. And they want to get him out of it, put someone else in there. He was brilliant in that, though. And they want to get De Niro out as well, because he's ruined everything. Do you remember when Mickey Rourke was just... He was the coolest man he in the world. He was the coolest man in the world. And now he's starring in Stormbreaker. It's so sad. It's sad. You know what I was thinking the other day? Who has not lost it? Right. right, because obviously, listeners, we know that Mel Gibbons has suffered, has sort of fallen on his sword, mm. right? He used to be an untouchable god uh, from the 80s, and now he's sort of blown it. He was always a ludicrous joke. Yeah, though. but he never actually completely blew it, what he did last week. Yeah. And so who's left? Do you reckon there's no coming back for, for Gibbons? Well, he's kind of blotted his copybook in, 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 in an indelible manner. So who's still there? Prince, right? He hasn't done anything naughty. He, yeah, Mick but, Jagger... 
but he, he hasn't, hasn't done, done anything he, he naughty. Has, he hasn't done anything good though either. I mean, Mick Jagger is has been a joke for a very long time. Like I'm, I'm trying to think of people who were. I mean, Jagger was was extremely cool once, I suppose, in the '60s, but not much since then. Certainly not. Yeah, since but the he 70s. hasn't done anything to make him a sort of pariah. Oh, I see. You're talking about actual positive bad behaviour. Yeah, you know, just ruining their career. A bit like Mickey Rourke did. So Mickey Rourke, the main way he ruined his career. What was it for you that that really? Well, the whole re the whole rearrangement of his face with surgery. Yeah, I mean the other thing, of course, was uh, the beating up of his girlfriend, stroke wife, or whatever. Right, Carrie. Did that really happen? Yeah, it did. He was a dirty wife beater. Yeah, is that true? God, how terrible. So it's not very good. You know, he had uh, two strikes against him there, and he was just an all-round rotten egg. You know, he admits as much himself now, Rourke. You know, he used to just behave abominably for the sake of it until no one would work with him. Come on, stars, pull your acts together. You know what? I'm going to be like that. Are you? Shut up. <laughs> I'm going to smack you. And then you're going to come back with Beethoven 1 and yeah. 2 and 3. Yeah, some cuddly film Charles about Grodin a fluffy did. dog for families. Is Adam and Joe on XFM. Music now, and, you know, I think, I, I suspect that this track, Furniture, Brilliant Mind, was chosen for us by our boss here at XFM. Uh, I just figured that out, so maybe it's not a good idea to skip it. And anyway... People might like it. It was a hit. Somebody liked it. See what you think, listeners. In the morning. That's the choral within the morning. It is the morning. This is Adam and Joe on XFM, London's 104.9. Now, if you're a regular listener, you might know that I've recently been to America. Joe Cornish has yes. been to America. America. I've seen America. It's extraordinary. And while I was there... I, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a theme park fiend. I like a roly roly rolling coaster. What's Cameron Diaz like? She's boring. Oh, tiny, tiny, tiny brain. Tiny brain. Uh, and because I like rolling coasters so much, I decided I'd try and get in a trip to a theme park. But the only theme park uh, in Central Los Angeles is Universal Studios, right? The Studios Tour. Oh yeah. And they've got kind of a. It's not really a theme park. It's more of a kind of a studio tour thing. It doesn't really have any roller coasters, is what I'm saying. The closest thing it's got to a roller coaster is the Mummy Ride. The Mummy Ride is a brand new ride. It's based on the movie The Mummy, starring Brendan Fraser. That's a good movie, right? Yeah. Wrong. It's a bad movie. But they've made a ride out of it, <laughs> and it's kind of a bad ride. So me and my friend, we had VIP passes, uh -huh. right? We could jump to the front of the lines. Uh, so we went on The Mummy three times in rapid succession. And at uh, the start, it was very exciting, because it's floating on magnets. So it takes off at incredible speed. So wait, you're actually suspended in the air. There's n you're not actually hooked to a track. Yeah, you're on a track, but it's magnetically launched. Oh, I see. Somehow, I don't know how it works. But all, all I'm saying is it moves with amazing thrust and acceleration. Yeah. And then we were screaming like a couple of little girls, mm -hmm. uh, whooping and hollering. <laughs> <laughs> but then it started getting a bit boring. <laughs> And we felt like a couple of idiots, basically. Yeah. You know, the screaming died out, and we just looked a bit bored and uh, uh, embarrassed. So what's the central gimmick of the mummy ride? It's in the dark. It's just a rolling coaster in the dark, and it goes very fast around corners. Usual sort of roller coaster stuff. Never goes upside down. But it got me to thinking, uh, what would be an even better roller coaster ride? You know, how could they push the science of theme parks into a new area? Because it seems to me they're at a kind of... Um, at a kind of breaking point with roller coasters. An impasse. An impasse, yeah. They've pushed the technology as far as it can go. One of the best rides there is the Back to the Future ride, where you sit in a sort of um, hydraulically operated DeLorean and you're suspended by a massive IMAX screen. And, you know, they do a kind of... They link the hydraulics of the car with the motion control of the picture and you feel like you're flying through space in a DeLorean. It's a sim ride, isn't it? Yeah, it's a sim ride. And that was almost more exciting than the actual physical uh, excitement of the mummy ride. Yeah. So I got to thinking, what if they combined the two, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's my idea for the ultimate uh, theme park ride. Right. It's based on the idea that the most frightening thing that could ever happen at a theme park is for a roller coaster to genuinely go wrong. Yes. Like the beginning of Final Destination 3, where they're in a roller coaster and the screws start coming out and the track breaks and they end up, Ah, oh, getting decapitated. Yeah. And, you know, uh, obviously terrible things sometimes do happen at theme parks, but we're purely in the realm of fantasy here. Yeah, and right? it happens pretty seldom anyway. Very, 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 Certainly very, very rarely. big American Yeah, ones. so what about this? It's a ride. I'm not sure what it's called yet. You might be able to help me with this, but you get on what looks like a normal roller coaster. Yeah. And you sit in a car, and it's going sort of along a track into a tunnel, a dark, mysterious tunnel. So you go along the track. When you get into the tunnel... 
What you don't know is that it stops becoming an actual physical roller coaster and becomes a 3D sim ride. Uh -huh. But that simulates you exiting the tunnel and arriving on the most fantastically enormous, uh, like ridiculously loopy, loopy roller coaster that has ever been designed. Yeah. And so you think you're on a real one, but actually you're just wearing 3D glasses and you're on a simulator. You go, that's the noise. You go up the track and basically it starts breaking. Yeah. And you see the track broken ahead of you. You're launched off into space. You do sort of flips in the air. You just happen to land on the other bit of track again. You know, basically anything could happen. You could go zooming into other rides in the theme park. Yeah. Smash into some kind of a, a kid's teacup ride and maybe <laughs> uh, <laughs> stuff like that. But no one would be hurt because this yeah. would be beautifully computer simulated. Well, what I'm saying is the most amazing disasters could happen, but yet you'd just survive and you'd land amazingly back on a track again and you'd be perfectly safe. Wouldn't that be a brilliant ride? That would be good. But the Have I explained it clearly? No, I, that's very clear. Yeah. That would be an amazing ride. I'd call it the disaster coaster. Ah, you know the problem with the disaster coaster? Yeah. Is if there was a disaster on the disaster coaster. Well, man, they've got the, uh, at Universal, they've got a Jurassic Park ride, which is based on the dinosaurs attacking the ride, and that's based on the premise of the ride. You've been on that, right, oh, Adam yeah. Buxton? Yeah. And that's based on the premise of a ride going wrong. Because it's been attacked true. by dinosaur, and that makes it I know, dinosaurs. But the, the are... chances of a dinosaur attack are so slim. Really? I think so. You know? And uh, I, I, the, the good thing about your ride is that it, it is pretty safe because you're only going up that initial piece of track, right? Mm, mm, mm. But the then, rest is simulated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's your idea? Have you got ideas for pushing the, pushing the envelope? <laughs> My ideas are stupid. I thought your ideas were going to be stupid. That's a good idea that you just said. Yeah, but it's still a bit stupid because it would be too frightening. <laughs> it would be good. Um, okay, how about this? The most haunted ghost train. Right. right? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Linked in with Living TV. Exactly based on the popular TV show, you just ride along a very boring dark tunnel for what seems like ages and nothing happens. Mm. But once in a while, Yvette Fielding pops out and screams. That's good, the real Yvette Fielding. Yeah, it's mainly Because she's got free time, a lot of free time. Exactly. Enough free time to actually be an exhibit in a theme park. She wouldn't be able to do it all year round. Most of the year, though. But yeah, she'd take time off to film the Birthday show. Birthday and Christmas. And then the rest of the time she'd be doing the ride. Right. It's mainly a women's, <laughs> it's a women's ride. Is it? Yeah. You wouldn't be allowed... Why is that? Because women are more gull gullible. Because women watch that show. Right. Mainly. <laughs> <laughs> right, I watch it every now and then. But in a way, I'm a woman. You're kind. Yeah, That's you're a good a idea, man. The woman. most haunted ride. That would be Chessington or Thought Park, maybe. How about this? Yeah. The baby shambles. Nice. Right? It goes up and down completely unpredictably and then fairly often just comes completely off the rails. And it's very <laughs> disappointing. Brilliant. <laughs> You're not talking about a roller coaster ride, are you? <laughs> no, I'm talking about the band. <laughs> How about this? The Tony Blair. It just goes wherever George Bush wants it to go. Nice. Is that it? it? it yeah. <laughs> it it follows George Bush. Yeah, this is uh, Wasted Little DJs by the... That was Wasted Little DJs with The View. This is Adam and Joe on XFM London's 104.9. Adam, free play time. Yeah, I'm going to do this one as Mick Rock. Okay. Yeah, music. My favourite kind of music is great music. And this next piece of music certainly fits in to that category. It's uh, a music piece by a guy called Robin, and his surname is Hitchcock, and he's called Robin Hitchcock, and he's a great guy, a great mate, and a great musician. And this piece of music is called Full Moon in My Soul, from Robin's great album Spooked which I think is a great title for an album. Check it out. And you've got the face on! Why have you got that face on? I told you not to have that face on! Take that face off! Arctic Monkeys with Mardi Bum. What face do you think he had on? Uh, just the one he always has. The Michael Jackson face? Yeah. Why have you got that face on? Put the, put the Keith Harris face on. Is it like Wurzel Gummidge? Yeah. It's like Aunt Sally. That's He's got detachable heads. It's got different heads, Crow Man. I've got my angry head on now. 
That was Wurzel Gummidge, wasn't it? Yeah, p- uh, possibly. <laughs> that was the Arctic Monkeys with Marty Bum, this is Adam and Joe on XFM Lonners 104.9. Nine. That has gone charming again, your, your stab. Now, more demented TV news. I don't know if anyone's been watching ITV on a Saturday afternoon stroke I'm evening. Pretty sure nobody has. No. In, in fact, that's uh, that's proven now, isn't it? Yes, because yeah. it's it's about to go down the tube and bust or something frightening. But uh, they've got a new show and it's called Prehistoric Park. Have you seen that, Adam? Prehistoric Park. Anything to do with Jurassic Park? Well, funny you should say that. Yes. <laughs> right. uh, the idea is, what if? And it's a brilliant idea. What if Jurassic Park was an actual kind of Rolf Harris-style petting zoo? Mm-hmm. In fact, it's more complicated than that. The premise of Prehistoric Park is that there is a time portal uh, that's opened up in some sort of jungle somewhere, and some cuddly sort of regional vets and uh, animal magic men have set up a kind of dinosaur theme park, not theme park, sorry, petting zoo, around the time portal. Are you following me? Yeah. So, Nigel... Wait, this is This is... Can you just say, is this like a narrative thing? or, or It's is a it... melange of different uh, documentary and animal formats. So it's a bit like walking with dinosaurs type thing. Crossed with Jurassic Park, crossed with Rolf's Animal Hospital. Yeah. But with no real animals, all CGI dinosaurs. Uh-huh. Right? Sort of crossed with Ricky Gervais's Flanimals. <laughs> right. So imagine this space portal, and he goes through this portal to uh, ancient China and places where dinosaurs exist. He captures the dinosaurs, pulls them back through the portal, and cares for them mm-hmm. in the prehistoric park, all right? So as a viewer just sitting there watching, it uh, it appears to be kind of a real documentary about a real place that has real dinosaurs. Right. Okay, so clip number one uh, is all about a, a woolly mammoth they've captured. So have a listen to this. Back at the park, Martha the mammoth is still feeling the heat. So it's time for the staff to carry out Nigel's cunning plan to cool her down. So there you go, they've got a woolly mammoth, they've captured her, she's feeling the heat, and they've got to carry out Nigel's cunning plan to cool her down. And so wait, is this... um is this like a beautifully realised walking with dinosaurs style? No, it's big shod- it's shoddily. It's sort of shoddily realised. So yeah. it's a pretty fake looking mammoth. And one of the funniest things is imagining what the shoot was like with all these people having to act around an empty space, mm. right? Because it's all very well for Bob Hoskins to do it, or, prof- prof- or a professionally trained actor like him, <laughs> but not for uh, you know people who are more used to being on CITV type shows. Yeah. But you know the other thing is they've got a woolly mammoth. I mean woolly mammoths are wild, untamed, prehistoric creatures, right? I'm pretty sure they are. And if you tried to, say, cut their hair, what kind of a response would you get? Eating. You'd probably be gorged by one of their enormous tusks, ripped to pieces, disemboweled, have your head over far to the left, your legs over to the right, and all your guts splattered all over the camera crew, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not what happens. This this is what happens. Play, play clip number two. Martha's an ice age creature, so everything about her has evolved to make her able to cope with really cold temperatures. And I think she might just be overheating. So Nigel had the idea to give her a haircut, which I think is a really good idea. I hope it's going to make her feel much, much better. You're okay, sweetie. Mm. You're going to feel much happier. You're a lucky mammoth, Martha. It's not every girl that gets a summer makeover. Gets a <laughs> summer makeover? That's not what would happen, is it? Well, it might be. If there had been Australians in um, Jurassic times... There, th- it might have been very different. The, the dinosaurs might never have died out. Well, they would all have had little bows in their hair, <laughs> wouldn't yeah. they? And little, lovely summer makeovers. Makeover. I just don't like uh, like wild, untamed, prehistoric animals being reduced to the level of some kind of Barbie makeover doll. That's not uh, telling kids the truth, is it? No. Now, meanwhile, they've also uh, got a kind of cuddly northern zookeeper who's got some little Tyrannosaurus rexes in a kind of weird field and he's built a hide to observe them. And this actor, who's given the thankless task of playing that um, prehistoric park keeper, has to kind of uh, act as if these animals are real and as if he's got real kind of moment-to-moment concerns with their upkeep. Yeah, so listen to this bit of acting here. Back at the park, headkeeper Bob is checking to see if the ornithomimus are enjoying their new home. I built this hide so I could keep a careful eye on them, but there's no need. They're happy here. Look at them. <laughs> They're doubling about like ducks. We've given them a real home from home. Oh, they love it. Well, except for that one. I'm very worried about it. It's 
gone completely bonkers. <laughs> gone bonkers. <laughs> it's gone completely bonkers. I don't know, it just seemed like the worst programme I'd ever seen. But it's David Jehan doing the voice. Is it? I think so, oh, I didn't recognise that. Let me just check at the beginning there. It's Uncle David Jason who can't do anything wrong. Back at the park, headkeeper Bob is checking I think you're right, I think it is. I think it is, like you can hear his Danger Mouse voice coming through there. Man, I don't know. Oh, you know what worries me? Is if a child were to watch it, surely they just assume that uh, dinosaurs existed. Well, the people, children are so confused about are they? dinosaurs now anyway, you know. After walking with dinosaurs, which is completely a joke amongst the dinosaur community. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's widely known to be a big tissue of myth and, right. uh, and uh, conjecture. Kids must just be completely confused. The fact is that the dinosaurs aren't coming back to tell anyone that uh, they're wrong though are they so no the dinosaurs aren't writing into the tv times yeah until TV then times doesn't exist anymore yes. probably why it's extinct <laughs> like the dinosaurs nice <laughs> jurassic times <laughs> anyway if you want an unintentional laugh uh tune into prehistoric park on itvs on saturday nights it's insane the actors in it are insane it just looks like a bunch of people having a terrible midlife crisis hallucinating bizarre animals uh, and i highly recommend it uh, this is XFM, London's 104.9. You're listening to Adam and Joe. XFM. That was The Smiths with Heaven Knows I'm Miserable, now requested by Terry in Surbiton. Thank you, Terry, for that choice. Did you enjoy that song, Adam Buxton? I always love that song. I remember I've got a very fond memory, or, well, just a clear memory, of playing it for my dad. I don't know if you ever did this, but I always knew that my dad didn't like much pop music at all. And every now and again, if he was a little bit tooty, mm. I would sometimes play something for him, thinking, this is so good that my dad's definitely, you know, he's got to like it, you know right. what I mean? I didn't do it very often because he always put most of the music I listened to down. What did he make of it? He, he, he just sort of looked at me and he could see that, I mean, I was looking at him like, come on, dad, that was brilliant. And he looked at me and he just said, and you really like that, do you? <laughs> What do you like about it? And he said he's just so exhausted. It's like, what, what do you think is good about it? I said, what do you think is bad about it? I was like, I said, I, I was sure you were going to like it because it's like, he's got a good voice. And my dad went, Phew! and I said, it's a really good tune. He said, there's no tune at all. He's just singing on one note right the way through. He did an impression like that. <laughs> That's withering stuff. He really did. He was so enraged by Moz. Wow. That he totally destroyed my little teenage dreams. Well, here's a record your dad is bound to love because I know he's a big fan of the TV series it's taken from. It's Phantom Planet with the theme to the OC, California. California! It's the theme to the OC! Do people consider the OC cool anymore at all? I don't know. Uh, could you do some kind of MTV-style survey? Yeah, I just did it. To find out what teenagers are thinking? Yeah, 50% like it, 50% don't. So pretty much split down the middle. Split down the, the middle OC. there. That's yeah. a surprise. Uh, okay, it's competition time once again now on the show, and this time... It's time for... Rock and Reel, or Rock and Rubs. Are the bands real, or are they just rubbish? Rock and Reel, or Rock and Rubs. Are they real, or are they rubs? There you go, there's the Rock and Reel, or Rock and Rubs jingle. It's an absolute peach. Uh, I believe it's at number one in the download chart in my brain. Mm. And we have someone on the line here who's going to be playing it right now. Uh, Kate, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. Hey, Kate, what are you up to? Um, I'm just standing in the ladies' toilets waiting to do this competition. I thought you were going to say waiting to do something else there for a moment, <laughs> seeing as you're in the ladies' toilet. <laughs> we all know what women do in toilets. Mm. Chatter. Chatter. Like hens. Exactly. About neighbours. And men. And men. That's all women are interested in. That's right. Are you talking about me? <laughs> in there, <laughs> Kate. Well. Yes, I am actually. It's my, it's my reflection. Mm. That Adam Buxton, he's so gorgeous, but he's so ugly as well. His clothes are brilliant. They're horrible. <laughs> I think he's so short. He's so tall. He's fat. He's thin. He's in. He's out. He's hot. He's what? He's not. He's cool. He's hot. What? Hello. Is that All how right. the conversation went? <laughs> that's what. Something like that. Yeah. That's that is a glimpse into the mind of the editor of Heat magazine. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's going on in there. Now, Kate, I don't know if you've heard this competition before, but basically I am going to read out ten band names as if I was reading the shipping forecast in a kind of calm voice. And after each band name, you have to say one of two words. Real 
if you think it's a real band or rubs if you think it's one that I've made up. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, here we go. Number one. Niagara gets up again. Rub. Number two. Worried about Satan. Rub. Number three. You disgust me. Real? Number four. Fragrant vagrants. Real. Number five. The underground velvets. Real. Number six. Hopes fade. Real. Number seven. And they will riot. Rub. Number eight. Freddie Flintoff's right arm over the wicket. Rub. Number nine. Don't ask for credit. Real. Number ten. Hemostatic picnic races. Real. Okay, Kate, I'm sorry to say that you didn't do that well, actually. You only got four out of ten correct. First one, Niagara gets up again. You see, it's like Niagara Falls, Joe. Right. <laughs> Niagara gets up I see, again. I see. She thought it was rubs. Of course it is it rubs. I made that one up. So Number she got that one right. Well, that one one right. point. Yeah. Number two, worried about Satan. Uh, that's that's a real band. You thought they were, <gasps> they were rubs. Number three, you disgust me. Uh, you thought that was real. It's rubs. Number four, fragrant vagrants. Uh, you thought that was a real band. You're insane. That's rubbish. Number five, you correctly identified the underground Velvets, not the Velvet Underground, you see, as a real band. Uh, number six, hopes fade. I made that one up. Uh, and you got that wrong, I'm afraid. Number seven, and they will riot. You thought that they were rubbish. They're a real band. Number eight, um, Freddie Flintoff's right arm over the wicket. That is a real band. Number nine, don't ask for credit. That's rubs. You thought it was real. Number 10, homeostatic picnic races. They are real. So congratulations. Wow. It's mind-boggling, isn't it, Kate? Right. What yeah. kind of nonsense passes for a band name? Have you ever been in a band, Kate? I haven't, no. Nothing. Really? No, I'm afraid not. Has he never thought of any names for a band? Um, my friends had a band when we were about 13, and I think I, my suggestion was Dead Flowers or something. Dead Flowers is good. <laughs> I'm sure that exists already, Dead Flowers. Probably, that is good. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kate, well well done for playing. Um, you know what? We're not going to give you a prize because why should we reward failure? And what kind of a message would that be sending out to the kids if you got given <laughs> prizes for failing? Exactly. This isn't Richard and Judy, you know. No, come on. We're we not just... going to treat you like a sap. We don't randomly break the rules the way do, the they do on you. So what we're going to do, actually, is we're going to send a couple of uh, feral street children in hoodies round who are going to spray an obscene word on the front of your house. How's that? That's good. It can go with the other words that have already been. Said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The cherry on the cake. Of course, we're not going to do that. We, we're cool. we are like Richard and Judy, and we are going to break the rules for you. Oh. Um, so, would you like a pair of tickets to see Kasabian at Earl's Court on Tuesday, the nineteenth of December, or would you like three copies of the complete Black Books? She box can't set? have all three copies. Why not? Well, because what are we going to give away to the other people? Kate, what would you like? Can I have the tickets to the concert? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Well done, Kate. Thanks very much for calling. That's been Rock and Reel and Rock and Rob. So we're going to play that again a bit later. It, it, it Possibly. It we're not sure. Belief, but <laughs> we might. We're going to have to consult various radio bodies to find out whether we can ever play that again. Yeah. Um, now it's music time. This is Johnny Cash with Heart. <laughs> that was Nirvana. With all apologies, you're listening to Adam and Joe. It's the X List here on XFM. Still time to get your requests in uh, on 83XFM if you're texting, or you can call uh, 0871-222-1049. It's, we are going to do the competition now, right now. That's Is that hello. Douglas? Hi. Hello, caller. Hello, how are you? Very well. How are you today? Very well indeed, thank you. What area of London are you, uh, are you calling from, confident caller? I'm in Hampstead. Really? You're yeah. posh. Yeah. Only posh, posh people live in Hampstead. I know. Wow. It's true. It's true. We're all very posh. That's impressive. Does anyone? Yeah. Do you ever get any trouble around there in Hampstead? Uh, no. Do you get yeah. the, Do you get children with tiny bikes? Lots of children with tiny bikes and uh, what's What's with wrong with children cars? having tiny bikes? I don't mean like toddlers with little. You mean You mean like strapping teenagers with tiny children's bikes? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean yeah. hoodies basically with tiny bikes. Mm. 
Oh, right, I see what you mean. Tiny bikes that are actually too small for the gangling youths. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 there's lots of them. Okay, good. Glad, <sighs> glad to see that. Glad we settled that. Not even <laughs> <hosting>. <laughs> I was confused. He's immune. Okay, Douglas, I don't know if you've heard this competition before, but it's very easy. I'm just going to read out ten band names, and after each one, you have to tell me whether you think the band is real or rubs. Okay. Okay, so you just say real or rubs. Now, five of them are real. Uh, I got them from the NME gig listings, and five right. of them I made up using my brain. Dude. So, are you ready? I am ready, yeah. Here we go. Number one. Basteroid. Basteroid, I think that's quite good, so I think it's real. Number two. One Minute Holiday. One Minute Holiday, uh, Rob's. Number three. Angry Monk. Um, real. Number four. Blue Thatcher. Real. Number five. My Dear Stalker. Real. Number six. Send More Paramedics. Rob. Number seven. Jihadaway. <laughs> Rob. Number, <laughs> number eight. The Delighted Pessaries. Real. Number nine. President Evil. <laughs> yeah, uh, real. Number ten. Jimmy B. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> number ten. Jimmy Big Nuts. <laughs> Jimmy Big Nuts. Yeah, Big Nuts with a Z at the end. Jimmy Big Nuts. <laughs> I, just, I was saying real because I wanted to be real. real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Doug, you yeah. scored a quite impressive six out of ten there. Six? That's kind of, is that a pass? Here's, here's the ones you got wrong. Okay. My dear stalker, you thought that was real. That's rubs. That's I, rubs. That's I, one from your brain. That's from my brain. Number six... Send More Paramedics. You thought that was Rubs. That's a real band. Send More Paramedics. Jihadaway, you correctly identified as being rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Number That's eight, terrible. The Delighted Pessaries. No one has yet uh, come up with that name. That's Rubs. That, that is Rubs. Did I say real for them? You thought that was real. And oh. uh, Jimmy Big Nuts, I think we both know <laughs> that that's Rubs. <laughs> That's my favourite one. Jimmy Big Nuts is the best. That's the yeah. best band name ever, ever made. With a Z at the end, though, OK? Yeah, of oh. course. So that means he doesn't actually have Big Nuts. No, he's I got mean, Big Nuts. Oh, Big, big nuts. 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 See, it's not rude. <laughs> it's not rude. No. <laughs> uh, but you did, you did sufficiently well for us to award you a prize, and... Oh, that's good. Did he beat Kate? He beat Kate badly with a big you stick. You spank Kate. Yeah. Oh, Do you want a copy Kate. of the complete Black Books on DVD, Series 1, 2 and 3? That would be fantastic. Yeah, it's a great show. That's I would like it's a brilliant show. On its way to you. Thanks very much indeed, Doug, for your call. You're, yeah, and you're Doug, welcome. Uh, maybe if you form a band one day, you yeah. might come up with an equally silly name. I'm going to steal Jimmy Big Nuts. Yeah, do it. <laughs> 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 Thanks for calling. Thanks for listening. Cheers, guys. Bye. 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 Okay, that was Doug on the phone there, and uh, before he came on air, he requested this one from ZZ Top. What a fantastic uh, set of adverts, don't you think, Adam? Something to think about for everybody. Though. Yeah, something yeah. to spend money on for everybody. Exactly. This is Adam and Joe on XFM London's 104.9. Chris is on the line. Hello, Chris. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm how, good. how are you feeling medically? Medically? Mm. <laughs> Symptoms? <laughs> is every, I, I just want to know, is, every, is your body functioning completely, completely on top of its game? No, my neck's locked on Thursday. I had to go to the chiropractor. Right, your neck locked? Locked up. Right, locked. that sounds terrible. Has it been unlocked now? It's unlocked now, yeah. Right, so so you are feeling absolutely fine? I am now, yeah. Tip-top condition? Yeah. Yeah, waterworks working okay? Yeah. Regular? Uh, yeah, well, you know. Solids? Passing solids? Yeah. Yeah, how's the complexion? Good. And any spots at all? No. Blackheads, have you checked the ears? i checked the ears. Have Not you checked in your I ears, see. Chris, recently? No. No, you haven't. Well, I'd have a look in there some before you go around boasting about the fact that you're some sort of a man-god. <laughs> yeah? 
I will. I'll get straight in there with the cotton buds tonight. And um, what would you like to request on the X list? What classic XFM type track do you want to hear? Uh, Joy Division, I think. Uh, Love will tear us apart. Are you sure you don't want the uh, Paul Young version of that? Uh, I forgot he did one, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And non parlay. That's the only album. No parlay, please. (laughs) Non parlay. That's the only version I know. But if you want to hear the (laughs) original by (laughs) Joy Division, then (laughs) then it's your funeral. (laughs) What What does he do with it? Paul Young. He sings it and does it, makes it a bit more jolly. <laughs> <laughs> he cheers it up a bit. <laughs> okay, well, here's the original miserable version for you then. Thanks oh, for calling, thanks. Chris. Thanks a lot, Chris. That was Joy Division with Love Will Tear Us Apart. This is Adam and Joe on XFM London's 104.9. It's time for some Beastie Boys. Have you seen, uh, I wonder, their movie, Adam, called uh, Awesome? I effing shot that. No, I haven't. Uh, I've been put off by some slightly lukewarm reviews. The reviews say that it's a big mess. Yeah. Because it sounded like a brilliant idea. Give, like, hundreds of people at your concert little TV cameras and then edit together all the uh, footage for a sort of multi-angle, multi-experience view of your uh, concert. But apparently it's a bit of a mess. You know, because I was... If it had been a real set of raves, Mm. I would have gone along. Because, the you know, the Beasties, I like them and everything. Mm. But I wouldn't hurt myself for any of them. Mm. And um, certainly sitting through a whole feature film of, of a concert of theirs, especially if it's a confusing mess, I would, I would put that in the hurting myself category. Yeah, well, I, I think we should reserve judgment having not seen it. I'm, I'm going to buy it and check it out. And then if I don't like it, I'll chuck it out. Uh, can you chuck it uh, uh, into my house? I'll chuck it into house. your bin. Yeah, I'll leave yeah. it in your bin. Nice. Uh, but this is the White Label remix. This is a really good remix of Body Moving. This is the Beasties. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks to everybody who's texted and telephoned and requested things and won things. It's been an extraordinary uh, programme, full of highs and lows, uh, hasn't it, Adam? It's it's something I'm going to carry with me for a long time. Yeah, like a like a horrible scar, mm. uh, a disfiguring <laughs> scar, <laughs> like like some wind. Uh, but we hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll be back at exactly the same time next week, ten in the morning till one in the afternoon. And don't forget to stay tuned for me, Mick Rock, live from New York. Uh, always remember the time that I met Mark Bolan. And I said to him, Mark. And he said, yeah. And I said, nothing. Mark Bolan, a legend and a gentleman. Cheerio.